All right, let's have a lot of fun memorizing the lab values that we need to know for the USMLE and other exams. Now it's true these lab values are given to us on the exam, but knowing the important values by heart is extremely important. It saves time on exams, it boosts confidence, and we're gonna anyway have to memorize it once we get to the hospital. So why don't we just take the time now to have a lot of fun memorizing these important values. So let's begin. Our scene takes place at this laboratory, which belongs to Dr. Alan Amino and Dr. Aspar Amino. Don't worry too much about these names. Let's focus on what they represent. Alan Amino for Alain Amino Transferase, ALT. He usually comes to the lab at 1040 in the morning. 1040 reminds us of 10 to 40. That alanine amino transferase, known as ALT, ranges 10 to 40 units per liter. Dr. Aspar amino reminds us of aspartate amino transferase, AST. He shows up at 1238, about two hours later. The reference range for aspartate amino transferase, AST, is from 12 to 38 units per liter. I know this is not the most fantastic mnemonic but it at least sets the stage for the rest of our scene. Let's move on. Now, Dr. Alan Amino and Dr. Aspar Amino leave this beautiful picture of the Alps in their lab because they're trying to sell it. The problem is no one wants to buy it because they're selling it for $25 to $100. The Alps, of course, reminds us of ALP, alkaline phosphatase. And the reference range for this is 25 to 100 units per liter. Hey, wait a minute. I think one of them left their album over here on the floor. I hope this is not their wedding album or something. That could be embarrassing. But anyway, this album over here that's 3.5 inches by 5.5 inches reminds us of albumin. That normal albumin levels in the body are 3.5 to 5.5 grams per deciliter. Now, I didn't put this in the scene, but total protein in the body is about double this, between 6 to 7.8 grams per deciliter. But keep albumin in mind, since this is a value often given in a question stem on exams. Oh, I forgot to mention, the doctors of this lab happen to love music, which is why they leave their CDs over here all the time. They actually have 500 different CDs. A normal CD4 count is above 500 per cubic millimeter. We, of course, see a decrease in a CD4 count in patients with HIV and AIDS. Now, besides the CDs, they also like to put a picture of this Wizard of Oz movie on the wall of their lab. I guess they're really big fans of Wizard of Oz. And they wrote Wizard of Oz 50 to 1200. Perhaps they were trying to guess the age of Oz himself. Was he 50 years old, 60 years old, 1200 years old? They weren't sure. But 50 to 1200 reminds us of urine osmolality. That normal values of urine osmolality are between 50 to 1200 milliosmoles per kilogram of water. 50 to 1200, which is measured in milliosmoles per kilogram of water. All right, finally, we're up to our next room over here. Let's take a look at this yummy burger. This yummy burger over here has 200 milligrams of cholesterol. This reminds us of normal cholesterol levels, that they should be lower than 200 milligrams per deciliter. High is considered above 240. And I just put the values of HDL and LDL over here. HDL should be between 40 to 60, whereas LDL should be lower than 160. I guess you can imagine that 40 plus 160 is 200, if that helps at all. But anyway, let's move on now. Here we have the triglyceride lady, whose body is basically made of fat. This reminds us of triglycerides and she loves her 150 balloons. I guess she likes to pretend that she only weighs 150 pounds or something. But 150 triglycerides reminds us of normal triglyceride levels, that they should be below 150 milligrams per deciliter. Above 200 is considered very high triglycerides. And behind her, we see this creatinine sign. Someone apparently doesn't know how to spell creatinine, but this works out well because the 0.6 over here reminds us of the lower range of creatinine, which is 0.6, and the 1.2 reminds us of 1.2. That creatinine levels should be between 0.6 and 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. And here we have the Kool-Aid guy. I haven't seen him in years. Anyway, he's got lots of sugar in him, which reminds us of glucose and he's holding a sign reminding us of the normal fasting range of glucose levels, 70 to 110. Perhaps we can imagine him singing, Fasting glucose 70 to 110, fasting glucose 70 to 110, fasting glucose... <laughs> I'm messing up as I sing it. But the point is that fasting glucose levels should be between 70 to 110. 
Now here we have a poster of serum electrolytes, which most medical students are kind of aware of because they come up so much. But if you want a little bit of a reminder, let's zoom in over here and take a look. Sodium should be between 136 to 146. For that, you can imagine someone writing out 136 sodium to 146 sodium. I don't know if it helps you, but it helps me. Potassium, we've taken bananas which have potassium and we've made a P for potassium. Now, the reason why we've used bananas is because bananas are high in potassium. And we've used about five bananas or maybe 3.5 bananas, whatever, 3.5 to five bananas in order to make this P which reminds us the normal range of potassium is 3.5 to 5. Fluoride, well, we put a $100 bill over here. That chloride levels should be about 100. Perhaps someone spent $100 on chlorine for a pool. Anyway, chloride levels should be about 100, 95 to 105. Bicarb should be between 22 to 28. Perhaps we can imagine a bicycle for bike, bicarb, bike. And bicycles go about 22 to 28 miles per hour. Magnesium is between 1.5 to 2. Perhaps you could look at this 2 plus over here by magnesium to remind you of 2, that it should be about 1.5 to 2. Now before we get to this man over here, we notice these mice over here eating cheese. Now, cheese has calcium in it, so this is going to remind us of calcium. Now how many mice are there? Are there 8, 9, or 10? I'm not sure, but between 8 and 10. This reminds us that calcium levels should be between 8.4 to 10.2. Now this guy over here, his name is Billy, and he's always Ruby, Ruby Red. So he's Billy Ruby Red, Billy Ruby Red for Billy Rubin. And his hair is green to remind me of gallbladder. Anyway, he likes to keep this sign under his nose. I guess he likes to have these ones right below each one of his nostrils. This reminds us of total Billy Rubin levels between 0.1 to 1. Direct should be between 0 to 0.3. Finally, our last room. Here we see leukocytes written in white, 4,500 to 11,000. Not such a mnemonic, but I guess the fact that it stands out so much should remind us that white blood cells should be between 4,500 to 11,000. These eyes over here remind me of eosinophils. The eosinophils should be at a level of 2%, actually about 2%. It's actually 1% to 3%, but you either get the idea, two eyes for 2%. Here we have these red blood cells over here, and right under them it says MCV 80 to 100, that the mean corpuscular volume should be between 80 to 100. Bigger than 100 is considered a macrocytic anemia, whereas less than 80 is considered a microcytic anemia. If the red blood cells are between 80 and 100, that would be considered a normal scenario, perhaps a normocytic anemia. Now we see the letters over here, reticulocyte count on the wall, with a 1 instead of a T. This reminds us that the reticulocyte count should be about 1% between 0.5% and 1.5%, with one being the average. So the reticulocyte should be about 1%. Now here we have a sign showing the PTT and PT values. This comes up all the time on exams. So let's focus on this for a minute. The PTT should be between 25 to 40. Usually on exams, you wanna see if the PTT value is elevated. So it's gonna be bigger than 40. That's why I have this lash over here to remind me of the 40 lashes spoken about in the Bible. 40 lashes for 40 seconds. Perhaps PTT reminds us of punishment, 40 lashes. So a high PTT is if it's bigger than 40. Then we get to the prothrombin time, PT. This reminds me of the Passover Seder, which has 15 different components. As we can see in this poster over here, perhaps the scientists in, in charge of this lab over here are Jewish. So again, PTT for punishment, 40, and PT for Passover for 15. Quite terrible mnemonics, but as you'll see, they'll stick quite easily. Now, you might think that this is a planet. It's not a planet. It's actually a plate, which reminds me of platelets. It kind of levitates over the ground over here. Anyway, this is not a mnemonic, but I have this plate over here to remind us that platelet counts should be between 150,000 and 400,000. And this is measured in cubic millimeter. Now here we have the He-Man, but I kind of made him look like a girl over here. Let's explain what this is all about. He-Man is for hemoglobin, and the fact that he's the girl reminds us of normal hemoglobin levels in females in the blood. The 12, 16 sensors over here are to remind us that it's between 12 and 16. That normal hemoglobin levels in a female's blood should be between 12 to 16 grams per deciliter. In males, this is about one gram higher. That is 13.5 to 17.5 grams per deciliter. 
Let's end off this scene with this couple over here. They're fighting. Well, let me begin by pointing out that they're both made of iron. Because here we're talking about iron levels. He's saying, and they're having a fight, because he's claiming that iron levels are between 65 to 175. He's saying they're between 65 and 175. And she's saying that they're between 50 and 170. Perhaps she's saying, No, they're between 50 and 170. So they're having an argument. He's saying 65 to 175, and she's saying 50 to 170. Look at that. It even shows these values on their faces. They're so passionate about this argument that they've turned their whole faces into these values. This just reminds us that iron levels in males is between 65 to 175, whereas in females it's between 50 and 170. Another value that we want to keep in mind is the total iron binding capacity, which is between 250 to 400. And this is true both for males and females. Alright, so these are the most important lab values that we want to be aware of. If you have any that you would like to add, or any other mnemonics, please put them in the comments. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this scene. Take care.